what we're essentially doing tonight, and, and again, I'm Richard Osborne with Pickens County, so I, I appreciate y'all's time. Uh, the rough draft plan is in, and at 169 pages, you know, it's, it's pretty thick, and it does have, we know, some redundancies, and so I've already sent probably 100 things to the state to look at and kind of cut down, but I really appreciate y'all's time in reviewing what I've got in front of you, which is really just, you know, a couple pages front and back summarizing what the draft plan might propose for the county and then the three cities. And so this is an overview. We can talk some about the summary. We can talk in detail about each part. I've got you know, a couple sets printed out, but knowing that it's already going to be cut up a bunch. So, um, you know, I, I don't really have a rhyme or reason for this one. Um, you know, y'all can just holler out whatever you see or already saw that needs changing. In general, was there was there one section that uh, that surprised you, or you thought was um, a little too much, a little too little of something? I, I noticed there was a lot of repeat of the same information again and again through. I think it's same pictures used again and again. I mean, I mean, there's nothing bad about that, but it's just you know, it is what it is. <coughs> The rough draft is essentially four plans thrown together into one, and for formatting purposes, it can be cut down and modified to where it, it really becomes one plan. So, you know, it might have one section for uh, everybody's five-year list of accomplishments, five-year proposed work program list of, you know, what may happen, and you know they have a separate section for all the jurisdictions just back to back to back here's their overview right now part of what makes it weighty is you're exactly right there's sometimes where it'll be the exact same page four or five times over and we can definitely you know cut back on that you know the bottom line for the county the the overwhelming theme as you see in your first bullet point of the summary is Predominant land in the county continues to be rural in nature. Um, you, you know, there's there's not county sewer in the foreseeable future for sure. The predominant zoning district or land use districts in the county are, are going to continue to be agriculture and large lot or rural residential. And then Jasper, You see the first bullet point, the city's ability to serve its citizens and landowners, public water and wastewater utilities creates opportunities for increased density and high intensity uses, commercial, industrial, etc., not found in most areas of the county. And then you've essentially got Nelson as something that's, that's being torn in two directions uh, just based on its location. It's, it's right there at the door with Cherokee, but at the same time, uh, some of the Nelson residents we talked to want to keep a general small town feel with having the ability to grow if it presents itself. If, for example, you know, somewhere between Nelson and 515, there was an opportunity maybe for you know, a year, two, or four years from now, annexation that might result in you know a, a large lot subdivision something like that uh, and then talking rock for sure was was really along more the lines of the county in that uh, keeping very rural although with talking rock they're getting a lot of visitors they would love to increase their septic in their downtown area to really you know it, it's thriving now people love the park people love you know one or two particular stores and I think Talking Rock folks would love to capitalize, make that, you know, one of the great, um, for locals and visitors, places to go there downtown. I'll just tell you in terms of 
zoning when, like, you know, Mr. Cagle's here, our planning commission chairman. So moving <coughs> forward, just like our current plan in the county, we've got land use or zoning districts attached to each character area. You see that uh, the last bullet point for the county and each of the cities talks about what the character areas are. The state really doesn't mind whether you attach zoning districts to each character area or not. Jasper and Nelson and Talking Rock, each character area just kind of says, you know, recommends residential predominantly or recommends this and that and that. And specifically, you know, y'all can look at the individual character areas and see. But for the county, we've actually attached recommended land use or zoning districts to these character areas. So let's say, for example, in the East Pickens Conservation Area and the two maps, we've got the one behind Mary and then the one in the back behind Ralph. So, for example, if, if somebody applied for a rezoning in the East Pickens Conservation Area from agriculture or residential to commercial, then the recommendation out of the comprehensive plan would be East Pickens Conservation Area properties are proposed to remain large lot residential and agriculture with those zoning districts. Uh, AG, agriculture, uh, RR, rural residential, things like that. I noticed in reading it too that um, a lot of the the past part from the old comprehensive plan, a lot of the projects that were slated um, weren't completed because of no funding. Is there some way to um, think about the funding? That, I mean, as far as the comprehensive plan, how does the funding for these ideas connect with with city and, and County um, budgets. Right, so on a fundamental level, just completing the comprehensive plan makes all the jurisdictions eligible, continuing to be eligible for, for state and federal grants. And okay. then from a budget standpoint, if a year from now, um, in the county's five year work program, it says to do something in particular, let's say, you know, ex continue to extend the water line to the Gilmer County line along Jones Mountain Road if, um, you know, I, I don't know, if there was a question about, well, you know, should we stop it at Blank Road and not extend it or something, there would be justification for budgeting for having the continuation to Gilmer County so that there's the potential in the future for selling Gilmer County water or if we get in a tight spot buying water from Gilmer County depending on the rates, depending on the circumstances. Yes, sir. So, uh, to talk to your point, um, one of the ways that county or city could connect the finances to the goal objectives would be through a capital improvement program. That's typically what's done in the municipality or the county. We took that out from the previous year's program. I'm an advocate that we should put it back in because it does exactly what you're asking. It, it connects the fiscal resources of the city, and, and, it's, and it's not unlike kind of this work program laid out. You know, it's typically a six-year program, and so you're gonna do this, and this year, and the next year we'll do that, and, and they're kind of end products, and they go in line, and they set priorities as a commissioner would set to what's the most important thing that they think needs to be done. And that makes that <coughs> connection and it's really a basic fundamental management tool that is non-existent here in the county and, and in Jasper. Richard, if I may. Yeah, another way to incorporate those two things is with a strategic planning process. So you take the comprehensive plan, which is a 10-year plan. You do a strategic plan, which is about five years, and then you break that down into action plans and hold people accountable for those actions. And when you do that, you can incorporate capital improvements. You can incorporate um, other sources of funding like grants, which are, as you know, very hard for us to get. Um, but there are ways to take the comprehensive planning as a foundation and building on that to 
uh, achieve specific things that can be determined. When you do the strategic plan, you get vested people and you kind of decide where you want to devote your energies and then you can set your goals and um, more likely accomplish them. So, Richard, um, I know some cities and counties have a, you call it a sinking fund, or just they take part of the SWAS money and set it aside for future expansion of projects mm -hmm. rather than spending it each year. And you create a reserve for things which could come up or emergency situations. And of course, for larger projects, long term, you use, can use municipal bonds. And I don't know whether the city or the county has ever issued municipal bonds here. We have. Yes, sir. Uh, the next to the last uh, uh, bullet on the uh, uh, Pickens County section talks about uh, continued cooperative agreements for intergovernmental service provision. But uh, does that mean that uh, the idea of consolidating uh, city and, and county services where uh, they can be consolidated is not a, uh, a part of the, the goal? Not at this time due to it being a significant <coughs> minority view, but not a majority view from accumulation of everything, all the input that we got through the survey, the meetings, face-to-face uh, -face interviews, phone calls, things like that. The majority opinion was each jurisdiction needs to retain its own service provision, whether it's utilities, zoning, land use, uh, or otherwise. Talking Rock, as a matter of fact, since 2011, there has been an intergovernmental agreement for the county to provide services to Talking Rock. And it's my understanding that during a recent official meeting, the mayor and council of the town of Talking Rock voted to adopt a resolution to take back some of their services. I have not gotten that in writing, but that's my understanding. On the other end of the spectrum, Nelson, as we know, dropped their municipal police. And it's my understanding they don't have something in writing in place. I think they're taking at this point day to day. And, you know, Pickens County sometimes covers them with sheriffs, um, you know, and sometimes Cherokee County will. I'm sure they will want to as soon as possible get, you know, that something in writing, an official, um, you know, agreement, but I, I haven't seen <coughs> something like that in place. Well, as far as this plan is concerned, though, the 10-year plan, uh, there's nothing in it to uh, indicate that there's any interest in uh, looking at the consolidation of services like uh, a police, fire, water, sewer, those kinds of things uh, <coughs> at all. There is something in here um, showing that since it was a significant minority view, in other words, there weren't you know, one, two, or three people, there was a significant number of people who were interested in uh, analyzing and um, looking into what would the actual ramifications be? What would the actual financial you know, numbers and number of people that would be affected? All that, is, my understanding, has not been completed. So, uh, you know, yes, the plan does cover that, but at this time it's, it's sort of, it's just kind of a shot in the dark type thing. Um, you know, I, at least, I, you know, I and, and my office of planning and development, we haven't seen hard numbers. I do have the example of Canton Fire where, you know, their elected officials and the city manager um, really saw that based on <coughs> financial determination, it was going to be worth their while to no longer have Canton Fire. And so, you know, Cherokee County covers them. And I have all that information uh, because I've gotten that from folks with Canton and Cherokee County. But as far as I know, the numbers have not been run for any service here, whether it's Jasper, Pickens County, whatever, of what it would truly mean to consolidate. But this, this plan doesn't seem to encourage that at all. I guess is what I'm, what I'm asking. Right. Well, what we did is use the majority view um, of, of various topics. That's right. Yes, sir. I wanted to add, uh, add something that I think 
I just came in with your attention to this, so I may be overlapping with what you were saying. But, uh, and, and I want to preface by saying you did an outstanding job on this. This is an amazing <laughs> document to put all these things together and put 160 some pages worth of stuff. I'm totally impressed. A couple little minor things with the camera on me, I don't like that. Um, <coughs> And I think we were talking about it when I came in. Uh, page 156 to 160 is, and in the middle of that is, is a discussion about uh, Talking Rock, but it has a different narrative. There's another one, uh, page 131, which is the Arterial Commercial Corridor. And it's right in the middle of the section of Nelson. And there's another one, 124 to 126, suburban air infill area, again, right in the middle of Nelson. It has nothing to do with Nelson. And I'm sure when your editor gets to this, you can put them in their right places. The one that was a little scary, though, was uh, page 149, where it's the Tate narrative. It's the narrative. Each of these cities has a narrative. And da, da, da. Well, it starts out with Nelson is the, you know, it's the Nelson narrative that got put into Tate. <laughs> those, are, those are just little changes that you can uh, make to make it a document that flows a little better. And uh, not sure uh, how the Nelson got to be narrative for Tate, but uh, I'm sure it's repairable. Right. Uh, yeah, you're right. 149 is the Talking Rock section. Yeah. And honestly, um, we got a whole lot more feedback from folks interested in the county and Jasper than we did anywhere else. Yeah. So therefore, it was, I think, easier for our state guy to um, kind of focus on the county and Jasper and, and do a lot of work on that. And he also did a lot of work um, with what he was given for Nelson and Talking Rock. Um, and, and I think it resulted um, to the negative in some copying and pasting. Like you said, this is page 149. This is the Talking Rock section. But it says it starts out with Nelson so and so and so and so. Well, this is the talking rock thing, and you know it shouldn't have Kennesaw Avenue in here. It shouldn't say Nelson in here. Uh, so yeah, like um, as I said, there were probably a hundred things that I found. That's why I call this a very rough draft. Yeah, I, I called and I wanted to tell you before I got here, and I, I apologize for. Oh, no but they're just little. Right. It's a rough draft. Oh sure. And we're just going to right. move it forward. However. Now we're getting into a little more challenging issues. Interesting you mentioned about Nelson and Tate. If you read the two, except for the beginning parts that talks about the city, Nelson talks about the city of Tate. If you get into the, the rest of the part of it, the recommendation stuff, they're identical. The same recommendations for Tate as are, with one exception. Uh, in, Nel in Nelson, which had a little narrative about uh, seniors making senior housing in the city. But I mean, it was word for word the same. And I think the guys at the state, what's probably those guys who did that, whoever they are, and they got tired by the time they got done all the stuff in the county and Jasper you overwhelmed them, and uh, they just kind of made it easy and went through and did it. But so, well, Tate and Nelson people might be challenged by it, but. None of the rest of the people here will. You mean Nelson and Talking Rock, right? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Right. But, yeah, so definitely, <coughs> um, I agree with you. You know, go back with a, for sure, a fine tooth comb on Nelson and Talking Rock in particular. Yeah. Well, I don't know that you need to, actually. I, in reality, there's a lot of commonality, if you think about it. And uh, not that you need to change any of it. Uh, I frankly, I think the Nelson stuff has a lot of flawed information in it, but I'm not even going to go there. I, I, I'll just stay pretty far away from there as I can. Uh, anyway, that was my, uh, I think that was kind of what you were talking about. I'm not sure. Uh, I just wanted to politely uh, bring those to your attention. I have more. Let me get that. Yes, sir. Well, we can have other people talk. I don't want to dominate here. I have a list. <laughs> Richard, did you make the comment a few minutes ago that there's not much interaction between the governments in terms of commonality of shared services or growth or projections? So the comprehensive plan overall 
um, really views the county as um, a rural area having predominantly agriculture or rural residential zoning and land use, not having sewer, and having a continuation of much slower growth. Jasper, the comprehensive plan, looks at the potential for both faster growth and a mixture, a uh, much greater mixture of housing densities or more commercial or more industrial, things like that. And of course, you know, Jasper has um, much less agriculture compared to the county, and the county, um, part of the comprehensive plan emphasizes the desire to continue the agricultural heritage tradition and have the ability and flexibility to allow and encourage for agritourism, agribusiness, things like that. So the county and city differ very much. Talking Rock is, um, <clears throat> is really you know, tourism and keeping a rural flavor for sure with, with the encouragement of improving the, the septic, which would, would probably be a privately driven initiative somewhat similar to the privately driven initiative to improve the septic for the Tate commercial buildings in that area. And then Nelson uh, is, you know, it, it's a little more on the industrial side for sure and a little more on the possibility for suburban style residential development than Talking Rock for sure, yeah. It just seems to me is uh, the size that we are relatively small county geographically but growing and huge potential down the road that there ought to be more interaction between the cities, the towns, the government over things which are common because I can't drive anywhere and through Pickens County from east to west without coming through the city of Jasper and same thing north and south and it seems to me there ought to be a synergy where a certain utilities, services, roads, parks, pathways that everybody kind of works together rather than independently of each other. Now, I've been here for 35 years in the county and it, it seems to me everything works as a little se separate entity. And I'm not saying that's wrong, I'm just saying that it seems to me there's a potential for elimination of redundant services and associated costs. It seems like the plan has just left that uh, aspect of it out. I think you were saying that it was because that was a minority position? <clears throat> yes, sir. Right, so if, you know, a few hundred people throughout the, the time, surveys, meetings, emails, phone calls, all this kind of stuff, if, if a few hundred people said, yes, you know, we want to keep the county, the county, rural in nature, you know, agriculture and large lot residential and, you know, less, um, you know, not having sewer is, is fine because we want a small town um, feel, a rural feel, an agriculture feel to the county as separated from Jasper, which has the potential to be the driver of growth in this community. Well, but I, that's talking about uh, land use planning. I think what he's talking about is services planning, like fire and uh, uh, fire and police protection, uh, and uh, you know maybe water and sewer, uh, more so than land use uh, consolidation. But there's no. It was a. It really was a minority position that the. Um, that didn't get much attention, uh, this idea of at least investigating over the next 10 years the potential for consolidating county and city fire or county and city police or county and city water or sewers. I thought that was a big thing that was talked about, uh, actually. It was a significant view in that there are um, a lot of great folks, very intelligent folks who have um, voiced that opinion, but a lot larger number of people um, ha have said, you know, keep separation, keep a, a distinct identity of the county versus, in particular, Jasper, and then, you know, have Talking Rock be a place where it's uh, more geared towards um, the, the tourism, the, you know, a mountain community, a rural community, 
um, the, the downtown area, but surrounded by ag and, and rural residential, and then have Nelson be something where, you know, who knows? I mean, they want to keep the, sap, the small town flavor. Um, we heard that over and over from Nelson folks. But at the same time, I mean, they know they're, they're at the Cherokee County line. So it's growth has happened and will continue to happen. And, you know, there's 30 plus thousand vehicles a day in that section of 515 versus however many thousand, you know, when, when you're up, you know, by uh, Biggins, you know, the, the numbers on 515 are a lot less. And there's just a variety of factors in play. Um, it, you're right, you know, there's, in terms of service provision, you know, you've got the city fire and the county fire, and, and they're very different. Um, in terms of planning and, and fire, um, you think of a place like, um, you know, a fire station out in the county can be a community center. I mean, it can be a place where there are events held and people take special pride. They're not just station number one and station number two. And, and I think we heard that across the board, at least for Jasper and Pickens, that uh, folks in the county like being in the county. They chose to be in the county for a particular reason. And then folks in the city, for the most part, chose to be in the city for a particular reason, and they're okay with it. They're okay with having closer neighbors. They're okay with having sewer. They're okay with having, you know, a close proximity to Kroger or whatever it is that they like to go to. So it's a variety of factors. Mr. Dobbs, you have something? <coughs> Excuse me. The next to the last bullet point on the county is to continue the cooperative agreement. I think that touches a lot of what Roger's talking about. In working with all these different agencies through the years, everybody seems to have a backup plan for everybody else. I can't think of a fire or a wreck or anything that's happened where people aren't basically bumping into each other to provide backup services. It's not just within our county, it's from outside our county also. And we reciprocate with them. I think the fires up on the mountain most recently, you had people coming in from northern counties helping us, all agencies. I think you see that with water service agreements, people tapping on the lines everywhere to help distribution in case uh, things go wrong. But I think through the years there's many, many of those as far as providing services that are pretty strong in place and continue to work. I don't disagree. I, think, I agree with you that that's important and it's being done. It just seems to me in the long term there ought to be an organized effort to see whether or not there's some e econ economies to be realized by co combining specific services and or a more formal affiliation, certainly as it relates to taxes. That type of thing. But there doesn't appear to be that effort. I just thought it'd be a part of the plan uh, to look at those things. Not, I agree with you that it's already being done, and that's why I thought it would have been a, a part of the long range plan. Were you in the meeting when we talked about that kind of specifically? Roger and some of the other guys had a meeting, and, yeah. and I was very um, outward and vocal about the large amount of our uh, city revenue that comes from our water and how it would be very very difficult to justify how we would possibly consider doing that. Um, I, don't, I don't think that message got out. Um, but, but, but the message is, um, is right now Jasper is tremendously dependent on its water and the rest of the county is dependent on it too. Um, I appreciate your uh, considering looking at the options, which I think we should always look at the options. You show up at the table, you've already made your mind up, you might as well not be at the table. Um, and there are a lot of duplications that occur, and nothing says that by wanting to look at those that you're supporting one view or the other. Um, and I think that uh, we are a small county. If you look at our projected growth, um, we're only going to grow by, according to what the state says, and I brought this out in our very first meeting, by about 10,000 10, people in the next uh, 20 or 30 years. So it's not a very rapid growth. Um, and um, we can manage it in a way if we plan for it. Um, so right now, it wouldn't make sense for Jasper to just all of a sudden say, well, we want to we, we want to look at this. The county would benefit from it tremendously with very little investment or time or energy expended up to this point. 
Um, but the long-term plan may be that we would partner with it. Um, and that can be done outside of an authority. Well, you just made my argument. Uh, yeah. I was, my uh, question was, shouldn't it be in a long-range plan that you're going to think about these things as you're planning for the future? And, and just the fact that it's not in the long-range plan kind of makes a decision already that, oh, we're not going to even think about these things. And that, that seems to be wrong for a, well, a long-range plan. Well, they base their kind of categories for what they focus on based on the number of people that respond a certain mm -hmm. way. And so it's a you know it's kind of a mathematical decision, and um, and and that's why, in the big scale of things of the surveys that they got and the input they got, we came to all the meetings. That wasn't one of the things that was at the top of the list. Well, it was one of the things that was talked about, as you said. It was. At that meeting, that was a big thing. So that's why I'm surprised that it didn't make it into the plan. It just seemed like because it was talked about so much that it would at least be in the plan that you would be thinking about these things. You might think about it in such a way that you say, no, these things shouldn't happen, but at least if you're doing a plan, you're, you're trying to identify the areas that you want to be thinking about over the next 10 years, and that just seemed to be one of the, one of the places that we talked about, so it should be included as uh, something to think about. But not prejudging whether it's appropriate to combine or uh, appropriate not to combine. I'm not suggesting either way on that. I'm just suggest suggesting that it ought to be a thing that should be in the plan for 10 years to be thinking about. Uh, like all these other things that are in here, it's, it's something to be thinking about. I think the other thing to add is that it's a flexible document. This isn't some, something that's set in steel and just because we decide on in 2018 that this is what the next 10 years look like, we, we are obligated to actually reevaluate it. And I think if there was a drive from a group of citizens that wanted to look at that and they engaged uh, the city and the county in the proper way to do that, I think the city and the county would be willing to um, consider it. But, um, well, I thought that's what we did here. We, we had some big discussions about that. And so <clears throat> I'm not suggesting that it should go one way or the other. I'm just suggesting that it should be a part of the plan because it was the uh, discussed, yeah, as you said. You had a lot to, to say about it, and other people had a lot to say about it, so I'm just surprised that it didn't at least come into the plan in some way that uh, you'll be thinking about these things over the next 10 years. Well, I'm That's gonna all. be thinking about them. Are well, you? then it should be in the plan. Well, I don't make, I don't make, I don't make the plan that you do and all the people that have participated in it. That's why I'm here, I'm saying that. Right. I think it should be in the plan. It's, it's definitely documented that it's been a significant minority view, it, even if it's not a listed county-driven, county staff time initiative, as we all know, some of the best initiatives are private-driven. And we get plenty of things where folks in the private sector get together, meet, analyze, come up with a certain proposal in writing, um, present it to the elected officials, and it goes through and you know, private business, private minds at work can come up with great things. Um, that, that's part of the reason why, um, for example, Sunday afternoon there's um, alcohol sales at Foothills IGA. Um, that wasn't something that was a county staff driven initiative. That was private business. That was private <laughs> individuals who made that happen from start to finish. Um, you know, and now um, Foothills IGA is our number one alcohol licensee in terms of you know every month's reporting how much sales they have and in general East Pickens you know is um, you know, folks apparently like to drink in East Pickens and that I mean you know that that's fine it's legitimate and that's great and um, you know but but that was totally a private initiative and that's just one example to me of you know how things don't have to totally be big brother driven yes sir Richard um for the record, I think it would be well to give perspective a little bit of the history of Georgia and the municipalities and the, and the counties. It wasn't long ago, the state legislature, I think in the late 90s, uh, felt like there were a lot of small cities, such as Nelson and Talking Rock, and I'll that personally, that really didn't need to exist. They needed to turn their charters in. More like around 1997, I think it was. And, they came out with a mandate that all municipalities list their services. 
from parks to police to fire to water to sewer to garbage, everything, parks and recreation, everything you could imagine. And you had to rate a certain level before you could maintain your charter. And I remember being in a vehicle with the mayor of Talking Rock at the time, a gentleman by the name of N.C. Lau, and he said, I've had it. I'm not going to run for re-election. Matter of fact, I think I'll resign and turn it over to a new mayor who's willing to put the time in to accommodate the state so that we can maintain our charter. And that's when Cheryl Sounds became the mayor of Talking Rock. <coughs> and her goal was to begin to get a fire department that would be recognized by the state, build a park, uh, build all the get the garbage service started, get all the services started that the state wouldn't pull their charter. And it was at that time when you were trying to form Athens Park County and, and Savannah. Make uh, it yeah, yeah, all those counties. And they're looking back on it now thinking, what a terrible mistake. When you end up with Fulton County splitting in small cities and the legislature is blessed with it. Because if you want home rule, you can walk here to City Hall and your line is nowhere near as long as it is at the, city, at the county government. And I, I think people lose focus is that we might not have the services that we really would like to have, but I sure want to get a hold of somebody to complain to if I'm not happy with government. And cities allow that all over the state. And that, that's why I've always refused to even negotiate or consider giving it up just for a home rule reason. But give up, to give up our water and sewer, I can always bring the... Mayor of L.J. and tell how tough it is to not have water and sewer for a city that he can't really go out and pursue economic activities. He actually had to restart a fire department a few years ago because once the county gets a hold of it, they're as concerned with Yellow Creek and Long Branch as there is the city of Jasper, and we have nobody to argue on our behalf. The cities don't. So that's why you end up with Sandy Springs and all these cities and, and uh, Fulton County beginning to form and the state legislature just got out of the way. Hey, cities are a good idea. And to start talking about getting rid of a city at the time when we need them the most, I'd love to see Tate incorporate. I'd love to see uh, over around the, uh, what we call Holcomb, or what we used to call the Yellow Creek area, it could incorporate. Big and New tried to incorporate a couple of years ago because they saw the benefits of having the city government to run their activities versus depending on the county. And you can't get a sidewalk built by the county unless you really pull a lot of strings, which you can city government, small city or not. Does that give some clarity to the position? I don't think the, uh, the idea of having an item in the long-range plan is uh, contrary to anything that you said. I, I agree with you entirely. Uh, and uh, having governments is fine. I think, uh, I think the discussion we had was, was about uh, the economies of providing services where there could be cooperation between existing uh, governments, not we have, we have eliminating a government in order to have a unified We, we presently have, and Roy touched on it, if I might, uh, have tremendous cooperation between county and city government. We don't have a superior court. The county provides so many services for the cities uh, that we appreciate it as city governments, but we provide so many services back to the county the county don't have to worry about Aunt May or Miss Joan over on Elizabeth Street and either grass cut or cut off the driveways. That's the city's responsibility. The county is much more rural. They go a long way from one driveway to the next. And we have them, like you mentioned earlier, Richard, that we are much more urban than, than the rural areas. And we need to have all of our water and sewer available for our economic future, economic development, our growth, for business so that we provide jobs for the entire county. And we have committed a lot of water and a lot of water over the outside of the city system sent all the way back into the 70s. As a matter of fact, it might even go back into the 60s uh, while the subdivision was built and water was run into those areas uh, at those expenses of those people who were developing that subdivision at the time. But I think there's a good place for the future for a hundred years from now for municipalities to prosper. And I think if we were to do away with all the five or six hundred cities in the state, we'd be in a heck of a mess. If we had county governments running, we'd be very, very socialized. We wouldn't be able to even go talk to anybody because we couldn't get to uh, the head of the government. So more governments we have that can talk to the citizens, uh, I think is best for the citizens. 
Hey, I agree with you entirely, but that's not what I was. That's not the point I was. Again, to uh, let me touch on that. And if we put that in that comprehensive plan, there will be someone pick that up, and there will be a big issue where we need to apply for a grant to consider consolidation. And I'm not for it personally, and I don't know if the council is, but we like our services. We like what we provide for our citizens. We like what we provide for Mr. Roger to be able to drive through the city of Jasper and have all this, have all the uh, traffic lights and stop lights, stop signs that he needs. But I can find you a way around Jasper from your area if you need. You can go all the way to Long Swamp. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but and I want to say, Johnny, I appreciate the fact that I live in the county and I have city water. And that was a cooperative effort years ago. Yeah, yeah I know that's that's the point of uh, of having it in the uh, in the plan is to be looking at those kinds of cooperation. I agree. If you put it in, at least be looking at Nelson and Big Canoe and not Nelson, but uh, Tate. Yellow Creek, Marble Hill, all these little areas can very easily get them a charter, establish a government, and provide sewer, uh, water, whatever they would need for their communities that it would be much more viable. But it's hard for us to provide sewer all the way to uh, Steve Tate Road and, and Big Canoe area because the county has facilities already in those areas. And we're willing, matter of fact, we sell water to the county every day uh, that we can. Uh, we have to take care of their customers, our customers, just like they have to take care of theirs. But I think we have tremendous cooperation, at, at, not only in Jasper and Pickett's County, but all over the state of Georgia. Well, it's again, mandated that we co cooperate. Again, I think you've made my argument. Uh, the argument is that it should be a part of the plan. That kind of cooperation should be considered in the, in the long-range plan. I think what John is saying, it already exists. If you look at our fire departments, they work with the county, they, we have service areas, our, our police and have service areas. That cooperation is already there. Roads already exist, but they're in the plan too. You know, just because it exists doesn't mean it shouldn't be considered in a in a long range plan. I'm just saying that these are. I mean, you guys are making my uh, my argument. I just these are things. That, just, these are things. The that one thing I guess it, in all this, in all the meetings that we've we've come down to is, in actual getting something done, there has to be documentation analyze numbers um, not guessing and so you know again you know private initiative can, can get a lot of things done we know that um, so there's for sure there's nothing saying that a private group you know could definitely get some actual numbers because at this point you know we don't know what true consolidation of parks and rec department or of any department would actually mean um, and, and it can definitely be a private initiative. Um, so, I, you know, I, I, I appreciate all input for sure, and I'm not discounting anybody's input. Um, now, Mike, you said you had something else. You want an easy one? <laughs> I don't know what you put into the plan, but one of the things that struck me as I went through the hundred some pages was uh, sidewalks, and that you have a thing for, for the county in here. And underline the feasibility of projects to include existing sidewalks, especially unless I'm on the tape. And, and, uh, anyway, add new sidewalks, multi use paths, and other similar infrastructure. Sound up and then the bottom of the second page, I guess. So I was interested in sidewalks too, uh, and uh, I went through the hundred and 69 pages, I think it is. And I realized, I highlighted each one, I where that's all the word sidewalk. The, the word sidewalk shows up guaranteed every three pages. Sidewalk, 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 and just goes on and on and on. 56 of them. That, to me, sounds like a, I'm trying to deal with your issue of a, a majority getting lost or a strong point being lost. I think you should count, as soon as you get over 50 <coughs> words that show up in your, your recommendation plan, it has to be elevated up as a high priority. <laughs> and should have money attached to it. I mean, it's, it's in Nelson, it's in Jasper, it's in the county, it's everywhere. And uh, that was just an easy thing, a little funny document that, that I put together and counted up all of the uh, let's do sidewalks. So somehow you need to, because uh, there wasn't anyone I don't remember
talking about sidewalks in our group <laughs> in the meetings. But it sure showed up in the document. <laughs> so I don't know who we give credit for that, but we should uh, somehow give it more meaningful recognition within the strategic plan for the county and the cities. Sounds like maybe you should have more intergovernmental cooperation on sidewalks. Uh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's a sore point with me. We won't go there. Yeah, it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's pretty hard in, in the county to for anybody, young people, uh, or I don't know whether young people walk anymore. Their parents drive them everywhere. But uh, used to be that the kids could walk everywhere. But if you come in on Cove Road, which has a 45 mile an hour speed limit. What goes by the road that I have to get on, it, it's 60 miles an hour cars going by, and there's two big curves, and I would be fearful of anybody of any age trying to walk along the edge of Cove Road. And there's no I just saw the new improvement on the widening of uh, Church Street there in front of the middle school, and I said, hey, they're not only widening it, there's a foot of sidewalk in, right? But it's a short sidewalk. But I said, how nice would it be to have the sidewalks around and or even trails that connected the sidewalks for people to get out and exercise and move around? Because it's, it's difficult to do. And at my age, and a bad leg and a bad back, I don't do much walking, but I sure see other people that ought to be, ought to be walking. <laughs> and with regard to sidewalks, all the training that I've had on the subject, that's put in there because you're looking at a lot of your future development being more urbanized development and they realize that sidewalks in the past have not been a dominant feature and they want to include that in there so when you go to a little bit higher density area you include that too. Yeah. Really the utility placements and right of ways and things trying to create it where it wasn't before would just about be impossible that with new development would be your possibility. I'll briefly touch on, to start with the county and then I'll go to the cities. Uh, so the character is in particular, arterial commercial corridor, which is the 515 portion and unincorporated Pickens, uh, which of course is, you know, 515 is targeted as the most intense regional commercial area, um, commercial predominantly um, ability whether the county or the city, uh, probably more, you know, the city of Jasper, have the potential for not just commercial, but apartments and industrial. And so 515 is really, you know, the growth corridor um, has been, is now, will continue to be. Big tree and big canoe area. And so what this character area was a little different from past efforts is it, it made mention of the fact that Bent Tree and Big Canoe are not purely isolated areas, um, despite what some people say, of course, you know, because they're, they're a part of the county, they're in the county, we, we love and appreciate them, and they're spillover. So, you know, all the commercial around the north entrance to Big Canoe, it's outside the gates, you know, that, that for sure, and then, you know, the Foothills area and Steve Tate Highway, and then certain things that are on not just within the gates of Bent Tree, but Bent Tree Drive and Cove Road. You know, it, it, it's an area of influence that's, that's very important. You've got Blaine, East Pickens Conservation Area, which is really, the East Pickens Conservation Area you see on the maps is the darkest green. And um, although I will note that Southeast Pickens is a new area of Marble Hill um, that was not on the plan last time. So, Middle and Northeast Pickens is noted as the, um, the future least developed in terms of density and um, it, it's really looked at in terms of forestry, conservation, very large lot residential. And let's see, Foothills Crossroads as a regional commercial area that, you know, it, it's always going to be limited because it doesn't have sewer. But still, it's still got a lot of out parcels available. There's, there's a lot of development potential still in the Foothills Crossroads area. Can I, can I talk to that? Sure. I'm, the, I'm Wayne Crawford. I'm one of the POA members of the Big Canoe. And I'm the Big Canoe representative of Pickens County. And occasionally I come and speak in front of the county commissioners for different initiatives. 
Um, we probably have 100 to 200 people in, in Big Canoe that volunteer for every kind of thing in Jasper, whether it's one of the churches or St. Vincent de Paul. Uh, we know a lot about your homeless and, and we care about that and we put a lot of money in to make it, to be part of the community. And so we very much want to be part of the community. Um, you know, we are concerned about growth with Marble Hill. And um, I'll just give you one example, so I'll go to your sheet here. Um, your alcohol ordinance. So we had military aid grades a couple of, what, a year and a half ago. And we looked at it and said, you know, we're discriminated in Big Canoe because you have different alcohol laws for distilled spirits in the city but that you don't have in the county. So I appeared before the commissioners and frankly I got very little response other than uh, I finally got a letter so we could put it on the ballot, which we're considering doing. Because we're losing, we, the county, are losing about a million dollars over a five year period in lost excise and sales tax, which we could easily recoup. Because it wouldn't just be the residents of Big Canoe that live in Pickens County, it would also be the residents that live in Dawson County. So you've got to think of this as a big, and the reason we're not trying to become an independent community, because we're in two counties. And you know, the, trust me, the structure to go through both of those is beyond getting on anybody's list easily. So we're really trying to work as close as we can with both counties. And we have a ton of reciprocal agreements. I mean, we don't have a police. We have to use, depending on where it is, the Dawson County Police or the Pickens County Police to come in, or a state police, perhaps, in a circumstance. And we really rely on each other's fire departments. We had this fire event tree. We pushed all. We pushed our people. We got up on the mountains to help protect. And I think it's all a collaborative effort, and that's the right thing to do. But we also want to make sure that we can do things that are viable. You already talked about the IGA. It's the largest wine reseller in the county by far, and um, they bring a significant amount of. of, of sales tax and excise tax into the county. And what we want to do is, when we have a law that's good for the city but not the county, we want to step in and say, let's make that equal. That's all we want to do. I'm just using that as an example. Now you've also got in your plan that you're promoting some opportunities for property acquisitions in Blaine, Hinton, Marble Hill, and Tate. And I'd really be interested in what are the kinds of things, because we might be able to partner in some way, because uh, you already talked about how important it is to have private initiatives, and we have a lot of strength, and, and we want to do the right things for the county. And, and one of the reasons that we've kind of gone back and relooked at it, we don't think we think we can do more in a volunteer way for the county. And that's one of the reasons I've been appointed as a representative from Big Canoe to the county to try to get to all your meetings and. Really, not to be second guess you, but what can we do to help? I mean, if volunteers, talent, expertise. We got a lot of old, retired folks who got a ton of skills. And a lot of time. And in time, and they're willing to get out and do it. I know, you know, my wife's very active in St. Vincent de Paul, and I listen to what they go through just to take care of the homeless. And, you know, and I, the last time I was here, we talked a little bit. You know, you had 824 people that were a year ago that were in the homeless category. Now, you wouldn't know that if, unless you were counting each one of those individual things week after week, but that's kind of what they did because they only help them once a year. And so that was stunning and amazing. So there's the transportation issue, one of our biggest challenges, just to get people that could work from in Jasper, that could work at the community, in Big Canoe, uh, particularly if you were working in service help or like the club, they have a tremendous transportation problem. It's 17 miles out and back, and if they're only making hourly wages and, and with tips, boy, they can't hardly afford it. So that's a struggle for us to see what we can do in order to keep a quality support. I'm only using that as an example. I'm not asking anybody to feel sorry for us. I'm just saying we want to help people whether, you know, and we're up against, to be honest with you, we're up against the 400 quarter, which is really pumping up their growth, and so we're losing a lot of people to that quarter. And I'll, I'll tell you frankly, the answer is, what is Jasper doing? 
You know, why aren't you really beefing up your quarter? Now, I haven't looked at it closely, and I can't second guess it. I know it's in the city and not in the county. So I know that that's perhaps one of the, the, the challenges. But <coughs> we're losing the ability to get people hired because we're now losing a ton of them to the Dawson Strip. I, I mean, that's just plain sense when you see it because there's so much more there to offer. May I ask, what's your definition of beef up? Well, when I say beef up, I said, what can we do collectively to create more productive businesses that will bring in a greater economy? Now, I'm not talking restaurants necessarily or any of those kind of things. I'm saying in a small industry, whether it's fabrication or something else, something that could provide longer. And I would think that would be part of your marketing strategy that you would want in your long-range plan because we're working on our own marketing strategy, and I'm saying that that's the kind of thing, and, and to your point, I don't know what the possibilities are because you've already talked about some of the things we know we're challenged with, which is sewer and water. Well, you mentioned beef up, and I thought that's what you referred to, the economic side of it. And the city of Jasper, over the last 20 plus years, have added three 500,000 gallon storage tanks on 515, which you find in no other community south or north of us. We've run sewer from the city of Jasper all the way to racetrack south. That's pretty big stuff. No, I'm not saying that you didn't do that. I'm just saying that the growth that we're competing with today is not is really on the, in the Dawson Court. Well, you, and they, I'm they, sharing they, that with you. They, they had about a 20 year head start on that road. And I'm just sharing this back with you. Well, I understand. And and they also have the Lake Lanier over there. I couldn't believe it didn't develop much faster. But we're about to develop here on 515. We've got projects going as we speak. But we don't have a Lake Lanier. We don't even have a Carter's Lake. But I'm coming so, back to the, the point the gentleman made over here. This is I don't view this as a we they thing. I, 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 tr truly, I just thought I'd s say, look, there are things we think that we can do to help the community, and we want to help the community. And for the the largest part of Big Canoe is in Pickens County. And so all I'm saying, and we talked about this briefly before. Let's get a level playing field, whether it's between the county rules and the, and the city rules. Uh, I just use the alcohol things, and I'm not here to make alcohol the centerpiece, but the rules aren't the same. May I, may I address that for you? Sure. The city had a referendum, and we, we brought our alcohol inside the city limits, which you're allowed to by state law. The county chooses to operate its alcohol the way the citizens of the county want to operate. And so we want to take that to a vote. Yes, and we're prepared. We, we are prepared to do that, and we're going to do that. The point was, I'm just using that as an example. That having gone through the, the county board, we understand that that's the only way we can move forward. So we're, we're with you on that. I'm just using that because you put it on your down here in the top of your paper, and I just wanted to be sure when you say promote. Uh, review alcohol ordinance and analyze whether or not changes may be appropriate. You put it in there. I'm just reading yours back to you that says, gee, I think you should. And I'd like to get everybody that's in the county to vote for it just so we don't lose the revenue. This is not about whether you drink or not. I don't care. I just say let's not lose the <coughs> revenue that we could because one of the things you need are parks and recreation areas. Well, there's a good way to help fund it or to put some money against it. We should be looking for every revenue source we can that's legitimate. And that was just my other example. And all I was just sharing with you is not whether or not we are investing in Jasper to improve the quarter. I'm saying right now we're losing, not because of Jasper, but because we're competing now with this quarter for, in, for entry level employees, particularly in the service area. And I think if you it would be hard not to understand that, realizing what's going on over there. And I'm just saying, there is a challenge. And the more we can do to help Pickens County, the more we're prepared to do. That's really what I'm saying. Do you know if that tree has a similar representative? I don't know whether they do or not. Does anybody know that? Does that tree but, have a... but we felt like that we have to have this. We have a whole committee we're putting together that's doing this with both counties. Because we want to be part of the solution. We don't want to sit here and be... May just I sit on the sidelines and have no help when we're providing so much volunteer support already. May I ask you, <coughs> I, I see the problems you have with incorporating Big Canoe. 
it's not just Dawson and Pickens is your problem, is that you're going to, you've got a gate. And you can't have gated cities, I believe, a state law. But with that being said, you want a city close by to you that can provide you the services that you would like to have, such as your restaurants that have uh, the alcohol ordinances in place that would accommodate your... Well, we have most of that already. Well, wait, wait, what's the problem? Well, we don't have... We're, think about a, an alcohol store that can sell distilled spirits. We don't have one. We have to drive 17 miles <coughs> here or 19 miles to Dawson to get it, even if you're making a rum cake. Right. Okay? And so that's really our point. I don't, I don't, I'm not trying to get into the weeds on that. I'm just simply... That's a good reason. It, it, it's lost revenue to the county. Sure it is. And it doesn't matter whether you drink or don't drink. It just matters, well, why are we doing that? So we started looking at everything when we were when the military came in and said, gee, well, what are the things we're missing out on? Well, one of them was this. And people didn't, don't want... And so I'll tell you what's happened. 80% of the people don't buy liquor in either county. They buy it at... Total Wines or someplace else on the way back and forth from Atlanta and somewhere else. Because the selection's better and it's probably a better price and so that's just how they do it. Well, that's lost income. So that was the reason and I don't want to belabor on that. Um, the part on are you trying to buy land in Marble Hill and other areas? What is your strategy for that? You've got it in here but it's not clear to me. Right, so that touches on uh, what really is true for all the cities and the county and the majority opinion that hopefully is expressed here in the comprehensive plan, which is the majority view was quality of life is first and foremost, specifically, uh, whether you live in the city or county of, of any of the cities, um, quality parks and recreation, more of it, make sure that all the parks are of excellent quality, schools, make sure that the public schools are not only great, but great to excellent. Be just as, as amazing as they can be. Um, public safety, uh, people overwhelmingly, the majority view was, they're proud of their city police and their county sheriff's department. They're proud of their city fire and their county fire departments. And they want them to remain <coughs> great or excellent. Those are the things that's the, the, the majority view. And so in terms of parks and rec, uh, what was expressed here in the plan was, yes, we have good parks, but we don't have them all over the community. Whether you're in, in the city of Jasper, in the far north end, far south end, wherever, um, there's not enough of them for everybody because people are always going to want more. And if you're in the county, um, the potential to look for property acquisition for parks to serve you know, on Yellow Creek Road for the Marble Hill community, Blaine, Hinton, um, you know, maybe one, you know, up Steve Tate, you know, highway. I mean, it, the potentials are endless because, you know, it's just all a matter of, you know, can the land be found? Can it be found at a, you know, rate that's reasonable? Can the, the demand be heard from the citizens? In other words, what, you know, folks in Hinton may want a certain kind of park, but folks on Yellow Creek Road in Marble Hill, they want, may want a different kind of park. And you touched on the, the challenge we have in Marble Hill is there's no sewer. And so it's really hard if you want to put assisted living over on the east side of, of the county. Then they, because of their size and the number of people, then it's pretty, you have a pretty large in footprint in order to put in a septic field if you're going to do that. And that's not attractive to most of the industries that do that. So we have some land that we'd like to sell. And that would be ideal, given the demographics of our population and their age. Um, you know, the school thing, I mean, it's been a real challenge. We had a Christian academy over there. Uh, we have a lot more people that can work from home today. They can work, at, at, whether it's Big Canoe or Big Tree or in Jasper, because they're artists, they're writers, they have all these other skills, and they can use the Internet. And so all of those things are factors in in our own marketing strategy, how do we improve it and fix it so that they maybe want to do that, but they also break kids with them. So that's kind of a new dimension, and so, you know, where can they go? So some go to Tate, uh, others are, may go somewhere in Dawson, you know, it's okay. <coughs> and so it's less attractive <coughs> for us in that sense, because we are seeing the age drop to maybe closer to 55 that are people. 
and they still have kids and grandkids. And so but that was the reason we want to start participating and, and be part of this. And I apologize for speaking longer, but I was waiting till the end to be sure that everyone else had a chance to speak. And just want to reintroduce yourself. We, we're willing to do things we can to help, but I think we already are from a volunteer standpoint. Yes, One other thing I just experienced, um, we don't have a lot of, of services for young people, parks, recreation, we've got good schools, um, but we don't have housing for young people. I had three instances in the last three months, I, when I, I like being around young people, I've got grandchildren who live next to me and so on, but I, I ran into three young people probably in their mid-twenties to mid-thirties who work here in Pickens County. One lives in LJ, one lives in Cherokee, and another one lives, I'm not quite sure, but it's not in the county. And I said, well, since you work here, why don't you live here? And they said, all three of them, I can't find a place that I can afford. Or even if I can afford it, I can't place, find a place. And so they have to live in LJ or Canton or Dawsonville because we don't have any apartments or we don't have any affordable housing. And if the county's going to grow, you got to attract young people because they're the future. And that's that's a perfect transition into the fact that housing uh, for the whole community was mentioned most often in the city of Jasper. It was mentioned a lot everywhere, but essentially in the county, the, the desire is continuation of large lot residential, low density agriculture. But in Jasper, what's put in this plan? And, you know, if, if there's heartburn about it, then that's cool. I can change whatever. But it essentially says Jasper's in the driver's seat. It has the best potential for growth, and that's everything from small lot detached homes to apartments to townhouses to con condos to industrial to commercial. Um, I mean, it, if that's, you know, what y'all are okay with in terms of potential, then that's, that's what's in the plan. So my, my question is, how do we get developers and builders to come in and build when there's a market for a lot of people who need space? And Roger, they're doing it right now. While you're sitting here, they're one street over building new units. They build a bunch of new units over behind Chattahoochee Tech. The private sector will take care of that. That's good. When those vacancies are there, they come in, they pull their permits, they put the guys to work and they will develop the housing. I hope so. One issue, I, I work in the insurance industry and one thing that uh, just came out this past week within the insurance industry is they are mapping all the fire hydrants. I don't know if you guys have heard this, this since this we just found out about it. But they're mapping each and every fire hydrant in every community and they're testing they're taking the test, the pressure test, off of each fire hydrant, and they are going to use that to say, well, you have to meet this certain pressure test for, so you've heard, you, I don't, you know about the pressure ISO testing. rating. Well, the ISO rating for each meter, and if it doesn't reach this certain uh, level that, the, I don't know if the insurance industry is setting it or what, but if it doesn't meet this certain industry, um, they're going to start raising everybody's insurance rates. So that's going to have a huge effect on affordability um, because if you have a low IRS, IOS rating on ISO. these meters uh, or on these hydrants, then they, they're not enough pressure to put the, the uh, fires out or whatever they... So this is like, it, it was shocking for the implications in the insurance industry and the cost of the housing the cost of insurance. But it significantly can reduce your... We, we've just put in a new fire station. Our grand opening is on Saturday, but we've had to put stations all around the mountains. Right, right. Because but we the, can't the, get the to them quick. Is and within the city of Jasper, the ratings are very low. But I, I'm saying that is... To your, I'm just echoing and reinforcing right, right. the point that without that... In fact, the matter is the ISO rating is very important for insurance. It's, it's very important, and they're talking about um, <coughs> skyrocketing insurance rates, housing, more housing insurance rates. And that's something that, I mean, it has to be put in your head that this is what's coming 
in the very near future as far as, as, far as housing costs. And you know, who can afford to... I'm going to take that opportunity to brag on the city of Jasper. Did you mention something about all the water tanks I'll put in? All that new line. Right. Well, that's it. In that's the a county, exactly. When you drive out in Pickens County, you find eight inch water lines in places you would have never dreamed there would be any water lines. That's big, eight inch water line for a rural area. And every 500 feet, you have fire hydrants. And what it's done across the county is lowered the ISO ratings for all the homeowners in Pickens County, Georgia. I think that's probably where ahead of most of the counties. Pickens County was a class nine for years all over the rural area, but uh, it's not pressure, it's flow. Flow, And that's yes. why the tanks are important. Yeah, so it's, it's something that's coming and yes. apparently they're GIS mapping it and they're gonna connect it to everything. And um, it has a, a real shocking, I mean, if things aren't up to snuff, it really has the potential to put a crimp on everyone that lives in the county as far as their financial housing costs. So Richard, when does the, when did the government's approve this uh, document? So this is the last stakeholders meeting. We will have an official public hearing to get more comments about the draft on Monday. That's April 30th at 6.30. It'll be on the main floor at the commissioner's room. And so at that time, you know, we'll sort of finalize the draft and then in May the county's strategy is the first Thursday in the month is always our 10 a.m. work session so we'll have a general discussion with the Board of Commissioners about it and then the third Thursday of the month is always the regular Board of Commissioners meeting and that will be at 530 and it'll be on the agenda proposed for the Board of Commissioners to approve and, and you know Jasper and, and Nelson Talking Rock they'll have their own Time frames, yeah. Yes, sir. Just to keep the uh, focus on the language in the uh, uh, in the plan, uh, and I'll shut up after this. Uh, but it seems to me that I think that you've got the uh, the count wrong when you say that uh, intergovernmental cooperation is a minority view, because what I've heard tonight here reinforces what I remember from other meetings, is that uh, everybody believes that there needs to be better intergovernmental cooperation about all the different things even though we've got some now we've got lots of cooperation now but it seems like uh, a plan should at least include some language that encourages even more intergovernmental cooperation i think that your your count or how you divided up your count is uh, is off in, in thinking that that's a minority view because i you know, looking around the table, I see, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six people have already talked about, you know, intergovernmental, seven, intergovernmental cooperation. And so it seems to me like that's not a minority view, that's a majority view, and, and uh, it's gotten short shrift here with just uh, putting in the word continue cooperative uh, uh, provision, service or cooperative agreements, not expand or investigate or or uh, uh, work on uh, improving. Yeah, I think part of that might be the concept that interconnected governmental, that you, you lose your sovereignty and, you, and it becomes a social socialism structure that nobody in this county wants. Well, that's fine, I, but I, I'm yeah, just saying I, I think for, that's, a, uh, for I a plan, think that's, it needs to be in the plan that there's some comment that about. Might be, that might be where you're feeling the kickback. I agree with some of that, too. And what I was saying, I think what you're saying is covered by that. There's nothing that precludes you from having that within that statement. That no, I, I just think it's a, a little weak. That's all I'm yeah. saying. It should be a little weak. It seems like from the discussion we've had here tonight that it's a, it's a big part of it. And so it probably needs to be uh, bolstered a little bit in the language that's in the plan. Something more than just continue. Now I want to give the last word to Mike just because he, he said that he, he may have something else. So I just want to give you a, a last chance. I have some. I'll do them personally. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, so definitely y'all get with me on an individual basis, and I'll be glad to go over, you know, any and all individual words and phrases with you, things like that. 
Um, I mean, I just appreciate y'all's time. And, you know, uh, Monday, April 30th at 6.30, if y'all know somebody who can be there, uh, and y'all are welcome to be there. So thank you, and we're adjourned. Richard, thank you for all the time you put in this.